Welcome to the Teacher's Toolkit for Literacy, the free podcast for motivated teachers and school leaders who want to inspire their students and school community in literacy learning. Make sure you subscribe to the show on your favourite podcast player, and for more amazing literacy resources, check out the show notes provided with every episode. Hi, I'm Sharon, and I'm the host of a Teacher's Toolkit for Literacy. In every toolkit episode, we bring you specific resources, tools, strategies, tips, techniques to help you in your job as a teacher of literacy. Firstly, we acknowledge and pay our respects to the Ghana people, the traditional custodians whose ancestral lands we gather on. We acknowledge the deep feelings of attachment and relationship of the Ghana people to country and we respect and value their past, present and ongoing connection to the land and cultural beliefs. Welcome newcomers to the Facebook group, podcasts and our Teachific Resources site. We love hearing the diverse reasons why teachers across the world are joining. So much deep and creative and thoughtful literacy work going on in schools. Some recent comments, one from a pre-service teacher who said, I would like I would just like to be involved in more teaching groups that can help me develop a wider range of ideas and content learning for literacies in primary schools. And then some comments from some teachers. They'd like um, help with teaching strategies to improve pedagogy, latest and best practices for teaching literacy and learning more about literacy instruction. And we always get comments. There's always a range from pre-service to teachers to leaders and a leader saying, really wanting to build on knowledge about curriculum. So if you're not a member of the Teachers Toolkit Facebook group, we'd love you to join and introduce yourself to the group. And now welcome to this podcast called Unleashing On-The-Spot Teaching Strategies. And we welcome Rob Vingerhoots. Welcome, Rob. Thank you very much, Sharon and Phil. Thank you. Oh, sorry, and welcome, Phil. Oh, thank you, Sharon. Yes, yes I got forgot. I was forgotten there. I mean, Phil you know, was also in the I room. I know. I know. Rob is so important, but you know, I am here sitting next to you. Yes, so. yes, and very important too, Phil. Yes, yes. <laughs> thank you. So good. Yes, we're we're ready for the trifecta of input here. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, and Rob, Rob, what have you been up to lately? Um, they're very busy working in uh, classrooms. Uh, those who have uh, joined the podcast before, I don't know, what are we up to, podcast 730? Uh, no, okay. uh, up to 90, actually. Oh, geez, mm. the ton is in sight. Yes, um, yeah. Uh, so that was brilliant. That is mm. that is a sensational effort, actually. Well done, you two. Um, I've, been, uh, I've been busy working in, in schools. Um, I think, I don't know if they're Nobody has tuned in before, which would be like unbelievable uh, to the <laughs> podcast. But uh, um, I'm not a, I'm not somebody who works in a university. Not, not that there's anything wrong with that. But uh, um, no, I'm uh, I'm in classrooms all the time, uh, so modelling. Uh, well, hopefully it's best practice, modelling best practice for teachers and uh, uh, then often debriefing afterwards and discussing, um, again, hopefully why the lesson was quite effective and successful. So uh, no theory from me. I'm, uh, I'm not a researcher or uh, or anything along those lines. Um, just a very practical um, consultant who works with but, kids but and ma- in classrooms. Uh, a practitioner. And magically, all your practice does match uh Fantastic research. So, yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. Not, not but not, it's just, it just feels it feels right. I guess feels yeah. some of the time. Yeah. But it's nice to have it backed up by people who know uh, who are smarter than I am. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, and I think um, an important thing to acknowledge in all of this too is that you are somebody who is talking about things because of lived experience. So you, you're you not talking about things, you know, that you might have read about or, you know, this is all, you've experienced it, you're a teacher, you've done it, you're in front of kids, you know how to bring best practice into their world, make it relevant, make it engaging. Um, and as recent as yesterday probably, was it? Or today? Uh, no, it's actually Monday, Tuesday. So uh, oh, okay. um, I, yep. I did a couple of webinars uh, yesterday and uh, today was um, – um, just a day to get ready. I'm, uh, you two know this, but just for the audience, I'm heading off overseas for the uh, eldest daughter's wedding um, in, oh, in Ireland. So uh, yeah. thank you. Yeah. So uh, uh, today was a uh, yeah run around day. So uh, bad. Yeah. But back into it tomorrow. So I've got uh, and Vinger Hoots. That's tomorrow. your. You're going back to your Irish heritage. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yes. We are the. Uh, uh, we are. We are the the old Vinger Hoots. Uh, come from a long line of. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, Irish heritage. Actually, actually, Dutch, isn't it, Rob? <laughs> Maybe there's a Dutch yes. uh, town in Ireland or something. Uh, uh, no, we're, uh, we're really West, we're Scottish. We're the, the Mac Vingerhoots. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> right. along, along with the McCallans and the... Yeah. <laughs> yes. At least yours fits. Yeah. Vingerhoots doesn't. <laughs> no. uh, uh, but, and I'm sure um, oh, well, the other thing that we haven't mentioned too is that you are an on-the-ground consultant and your work is mostly in numeracy. But the reason we absolutely love having you on the podcast, Rob, is because the strategies that we're talking about, they're not just confined to literacy. Good strategies like this, this on-the-spot teaching strategies, no matter what subject area we're in, you know, there are strategies that we can employ for great effect. As to Sharon's point, look, a lot of times, you know, I think maths is just a vehicle for, for my work just but I think it's more about just good teaching yeah. um, and I think it's a as you said Sharon I think it's across the board yeah. um, look Phil the teaching that you were brought up on I was brought up on Sharon was brought up on it, it was um, it was out the front and we'll we'll transfer knowledge um, look it hasn't worked there, there has been research you know you've got the learning triangle and, and way down the bottom of that learning triangle is transfer of knowledge like I will tell you what I know yeah, yeah, and yeah. now I have passed on my knowledge to you what yeah. more do you want from me mm. how generous of me mm. um, and it's it's just it's for year on year decade on decade whenever you pick up any research it's proven lecture style does not work it's just it's down in the low 10 12 15 percent of effectiveness range uh, whereas discovery which just doesn't happen because you walk in a room you, you need to set the kids up for discovery and ownership and uh, um yeah it's highly effective but it's at the other end of the triangle so uh, I, I read somewhere it be. i read somewhere that it came from centuries of you know uh, the church model of the sermon in front of the congregation and that was the model that i will just preach to you and you know you will learn and that sort of transferred over into formal education later on but um, yeah, as you know, we we found it just doesn't happen. You know, it just just doesn't work. Um, we'd, like sure it it work. we'd like yes, it to. We'd like it to. Well, yeah. well people, yeah. especially if you like the sound of your own voice, but uh, um, which yeah. uh, many many a bag of yeast did. Um, sorry, that rhyming slang there. But uh, um, yes, it never worked for my dad. He just read the Sunday Observer at the back of the church, so I don't think he learned a lot. <laughs> uh, but but, the, but on, on the flip side of that is the. You know, Sorry for all the Catholic uh, uh, people tuning in. That's all right. Um, <laughs> um, but on the flip side of that is the um, apprenticeship model of uh, the apprentice over hundreds of years, apprentices working with their master and then learning yeah. from them um, mm. in a mm. workshop approach. Mm. Um, and then they were yep. just adjusting their learning to what the master was showing them. And that was a, you know, a hands-on I'll show you. Then you practice some of it, and then yep. you know. Yep. Um, and that was that, and that was generational. And as new equipment and techniques, whatever they were, came along, that apprentice who's now becoming somebody who knows that the field or the task uh, it changes and mm. uh, improves mm. practice, and then passes it on to the next gen. It's a, mm. It mm. seems to be a a more effective model than the uh, than the transfer of knowledge one. Yeah, because you then had whole towns of expert blacksmiths or glassmakers mm. or whatever and they just got better and better at their craft because of that knowledge being yeah. transferred really expertly to them. Um, so we've got to look at, you know, there's kind of two different models. There's probably lots of models, but there's two distinct things, you know, the church sermon and then there's the apprentice in their uh, workplace. So, yeah. Shall we actually talk about what we mean by on-the-spot teaching? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I knew we had you here, Sharon, for the the intelligent part of the conversation. Um, yes. yes, what is on the spot teaching? Uh, to me, it's it's whenever you actually get amongst the kids. So uh, my objective in a lesson is to talk as uh, as, as less as as I can. Uh, effective teachers of maths or anything uh, are good listeners to what kids tell you. So. Uh, you need to ask good questions. Don't presume that they don't know anything. This is one of the worst traps in teaching, literacy, science, STEM, you name it, maths. Yeah. Uh, we presume because we haven't taught it yet to the group of kids in front of us, whether they be year 10s or preps, we're, we're sinful at it in preps. It's just like, oh, you're little, uh, yeah. you're just new at school, you don't know stuff. Oh, man, what those kids know, what reception, foundation, prep, whatever title states give them. Uh, that's just incredible. Uh, if we actually were 
quiet more and just let them give the give them the opportunity to tell us what they know mm. and then record what they tell us on a board or on a on a smart TV. Um, it's just a, it's a brilliant way to go. So I try to talk as little as I can. I'll set up. A, I'll have a warm up where um you know what do you bring into the table, kids? Let me know, and then I'll introduce a task quickly as I can. I'll give my instructions once because I don't want to hear my own voice up there. The kids don't want to hear my voice. I'll give my instructions once. All I'm aiming for is 51% of my kids to have understood the instructions. Oh, Again, a... too, oh, oh, no. too many teachers aim for 100. Like, yeah, good luck with that. You'll be there for three <laughs> days. Um, and then there's still two kids you don't know. Like, so it's, but yeah. why, why aren't we just happy that if we get half the kids, yeah. send them off, because now there's other kids who can tell other kids what to do. There's other kids who just look on another kid's work and go, oh, yeah, I know how to get started now. That's yeah. not copying. That's just human. And you know the three kids who wouldn't understand your instructions anyway. Why don't you just keep them on the floor for a minute or go and see them individually? Um, I don't understand the sense of aiming for 100%. Yeah. And it kills momentum. Yes. And the kids yeah, start the... to realise you're a three Peter or you're a four Peter. If you're a four Peter, <laughs> well then just shutting out for the first three, waiting for the fourth time to give the instructions. Yes. Like yes. It's, if I'm it's not rolling on the floor. Floor, yeah, yeah. Prep will be now. Prep's fall yes. over like trees in a forest just out of sheer boredom. Yeah. And uh, um, so they uh, and other kids, the good kids start playing up and you know, it's a whole other teaching skill, it's a whole other podcast about reading your audience. But um, mm. But it also so requires I, an understanding as a teacher that every student in your class is a potential teacher yeah absolutely and we should be exactly right phil and yeah. we should be we should be promoting this notion you look after one another if yes. one of you doesn't understand to yeah. do it but you do yeah. then you should be explaining it to that kid how powerful is that to have oh, it's immensely and i go yeah. over and in a room the other day i could tell there was two kids uh, who had uh nfi you know they had no 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 flaming idea about what i just said <laughs> yeah. and just so uh, that doesn't worry me i said no problems so uh, I, I sent the kids off and i thought uh, i'll go straight to this kid and, and i went over to the kid and already the person next to her had started uh, giving, saying, oh, this is yeah. what you do. And I just looked at the kid and gave a thumbs up and, a, you know, a, a circle with my fingers saying, that's perfect, thank mm -hmm. you. And uh, yeah. I found another one. Um, yeah, he was struggling to get started. I spent about 30 seconds with him, just went over the instructions, showed him, gave him a demonstration, drew a number line, off he went. And so with the other kid, yep, he'd looked on somebody else's work and was uh, – uh, not copying. He just said, "Oh, now I see what you have to do," yeah. and yeah. Uh, and yeah. off he went. So it's mm. it's it's just it's um fifty one percent. If yeah. you get half your kids who have understood your instructions, let them go. You yeah. you got enough kids now. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, an apprentice working with their master, the master's not going to say, "Well, stop copying me." <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. You, know, you think just, just, you know, you've seen the anvil, just go and use it. Uh, just, <laughs> I've shown you the PowerPoint on how to do this stuff. <laughs> so once I've got the kids going, then uh, then I'm amongst them. You know, this is mm. this is this is uh, this is what Hattie was talking about. We know I don't know how big Hattie is in SA and other states. Yes. He's uh, big, big in Victoria, but yeah, the you know, high one of these most, strategies, yeah, his yeah. strategies, yeah. and yeah. and one of them was give immediate feedback. Um, that that's that's at its most impactful when you do it individually. Mm. Yes. When you do it as a group of the whole grade, that's divided by that many people that are listening to whatever you what mm. the feedback you're yes. giving them, yeah. and they don't know whether it's directed at you or not. Does he mean me? I don't think he does. Like when you do it one on one to a kid, and feedback is just uh, could be I love what you're doing. You're on the right track. Keep going. It could be mm. that quick. Yes. It could be five mm. seconds yeah. uh, to the next mm. kid. It's ah, oh, see what I see what's happening here. Um, do you want to see how to fix this? And uh, that might take me thirty seconds might take you a minute move on to the next kid and it's that that's that um but that's it, high impact but it requires yes. and it's on the yeah. spot yes and that i was going to say if we did have if we were talking about synonyms you know here it is you know on the spot teaching and that immediate feedback but it you know requires, they're, they're yep. equal things but it requires <laughs> yep. um also to have an engaging task where they can all work independently oh. That's the very that that is absolutely it. That's uh, uh, quite truthful. And if that task, not that all my tasks are open, uh, the majority are. But as long as they're engaging, it's, uh, look, I'm not worried if a task isn't open. As long mm -hmm. as it's engaging, if your kids are engaged, that ability to talk to a kid and give immediate feedback on the spot. 
um, because they're engaged in the task. They're so happy to engage with you. And the whole thing that's you know to the side and perhaps not to the side, perhaps even more important than the product of the task is that relationship that you then build with kids. Then it's yeah. become one that my teacher is interested in yes. me. Yes. yes. And I have him or her giving their attention to me. Yeah, yes. because all the it's, others, it's powerful. Yeah. All yeah. the others are engaged, so you can then concentrate yeah. on that teacher yeah. or a small group. Yeah. And and absolutely. And, and oh, sorry, Phil, but uh, just to follow that on, and then what, what you uh, – people say, well, you go around to every kid, what, do you, what, what if they're making a mistake? Well, then it's this common sense of teaching. If I'm going around to the kids and for five out of the first six kids I visit are still, have all got the same misconception or they're uh, making the same mistake – I stop the grade and I do another definition of explicit teaching, which is you up the front and do a mini clinic. But I'm not starting with the clinic because then I right. presume you don't know how to do the skill. Yeah. I've and, got to find out first. Have, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. And we haven't, haven't even given them a chance. It's exactly, yeah. exactly. So we yeah. chuck them into it. And so often I get through a whole session, and I've fixed up everything one-on-one. Occasionally I pull a group of kids. So I say, hold on, I've got four kids. I need to show yeah. them how to use brackets. Mm. This happened the other day. I yeah. said, come here, you four. And because I just identified them as I went around. And I just yes. said, hey, listen, yeah. watch it. these are grade one, twos. And I said, look, if you did this with the brackets, uh, it works much better. And actually some of the stuff you're doing is actually wrong because you're not using brackets. And they were going, oh, yeah, all right. And so mm. it, took, uh, it, was a, it was a three, oh, three three to four minute mini clinic with four kids and I send them back. Yeah, uh, yeah. Another day They're I stopped the whole way. grade. Yeah, yes. and they're all definitions of this explicit teaching uh, I was or say, direct instruction. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, they're all examples of it. Yeah. You know? yeah, we're, I was we're too say, narrow in our definition of it. Yeah, I was going to say you've often said, Rob, um, when I've been working with you in classrooms, which is I just highly enjoy that, you do such an amazing job, that working one-to-one with uh, kids or even – one to, to a little group is that's yeah. your best explicit teaching you can you can yeah it's the most powerful most absolutely powerful. Yeah. yeah it's the most impactful by by a long way but but at least when you um, stop the whole grade because of, of the school that they're missing or the misconception that they have Phil and Sharon mm-hmm. at least then the kids are going all right yeah we need to listen to him because he spotted something that we're doing yes. wrong and yes. we do need his help. Um, and so you do it. But uh, there's a lot of other times I get through a whole session and I've been able to fix it up one-on-one. Mm. Um, probably people out there have, uh, if you're listening in, you're going, but what if you don't get to every kid? Yeah. Really good question. Yeah, that's a great and, question. And you're, you're spot on for asking it and often I don't. Uh, but I get around mm. to as many as I can. Yeah. Having said that, I don't set getting around to the whole class as, as my target. No, no, but no. You, no. You just run yourself ragged and the quality time mm. just wouldn't happen. So what I tend to do is just so people know that there's an answer to this. Um, I, I try to pick up a few more kids in my reflection time, but then I collect their work. And this is one of the things, and I think, Phil, you've probably heard me say this a few times if you not mm. you as, as well, Sharon, there's only three rules in maths. Rule number one, record. Mm. Rule number two. Um, what was that again? Uh, yeah, record. <laughs> Rule number three, record, because I want to collect your work. This is one of the things I have with the, one of the issues I have, not an issue, like one of the things you've got to be wary of with the mini whiteboards oh, down in yes. prep one too, yeah. yes. is they, they, they rub out their work. Oh, I didn't put, I didn't make my number five was backwards. <laughs> like, I don't care if your five's backwards, do just give me your work yeah. and they rub it off and, and yes. uh, unless you're quick on the camera on your phone mm. sometimes they're rubbing away terrific evidence of, of yes. what they can or yes. can't do so yes. um, and their record, story record, is record. lost oh, and their story is lost yeah and so uh so i collect i know what sometimes it depends on the lesson size of the grade obviously but uh so if i don't get around to every kid i collect their work and i show yeah. the teachers who are watching this collect their work now go through it is there anything there that that surprises you yeah. and they go no this is what i expected from this kid and i said well don't follow it up tomorrow uh what about this one uh no, it doesn't surprise me. That's what I expected from her, so don't follow it up tomorrow. What about this kid? Uh, wow. Whoa. I didn't think I didn't think she could do that. I said, follow mm. it up tomorrow. Mm. And so um, so the same, same with the lesson tomorrow. And, and this is a side thing, but sometimes if you've got a really engaging or you've especially you've got an open task, 
um, they'll stand up to two lessons. And, and I think in our planning, sometimes we don't allow, we don't identify a lesson as being really open and being able to do it the next day. Same, same, but different. Change the numbers, change uh, yeah. change mm-hmm. a couple mm-hmm. of the rules, and all mm-hmm. of a sudden it's a new activity to the kids. And you're seeing the same thing and you pick up the kids that you've identified from collecting their yeah. work and you're either taking them as a group or, you, or you're seeing them or yesterday's work revealed that you need a, a, a little uh, extension task for three or four kids so you set them up it's um it's just a common sense of teaching but to ask do you get to every kid is the answer is rarely uh, so and that's a perfectly honest answer and uh people listening to the podcast that was would have been a fair question to ask of me um so uh yeah i, I, I as a teacher i used to collect their work and uh, when I model in a classroom, I said to grab their work, go and grab their work, and you'll know who to work with tomorrow, and who you don't have to worry about. It's brilliant, um, and that's incorporating writing in maths. And Sharon, you do a, a kind of a recording um, aspect too, but you you have that problem with uh, whiteboards too, don't you? With um, yes, yes, I um, you actually want students to catch their own thinking and have yeah, a record of yeah, it yeah, yeah, um, yeah. in whatever area that is and what what that looks like on paper you know the visual representations or um, you know keywords sentences mm, you know whatever mm-hmm, format mm. that's in you know it's, I love that quote by E.E. E. Cummings you know the author how can I know what I think until I see what I say no oh, well all Edward Edward Cummings, that's <laughs> fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, oh my gosh, that's what we've got in our family. Anyway. Um, you know, so yes, I do have that same, um, and I want kids to actually really feel connected to what they record and being able mm. to look back on their own, you know, mm. their own story. Yeah, you know, yeah it's very time. important. Yes. Yep. And yeah. look, there's some there's there's some activities that I'm happy with you doing it that because I understand why you're doing it on the uh, mini whiteboards. But uh, a lot of times we say to teacher, if you don't mind, this stuff will be gold for you. You yes. know, get them to do it in their books. Yeah. Um, and it's uh yeah, it, it works well. It yeah. works well. That that notion of evidence, I just keep using the word mm. preps to year tens. I use just to look, I need to see evidence, I need to see uh, yeah. what you can, what you can't do and how well you can do it. Um, yes. Uh, make sure you give me the evidence. Yeah, Rob, and ma- that's part of the what lets them know just how interested we are. Mm, yeah, yeah, we care. We care and that we can have real conversations around that. You know, not just, you know, that, oh, good, handed it up, great. Yeah, but yeah. that we're actually interested enough to know and to notice what is it that from today – yeah, I know well, for tomorrow. Tomorrow, yeah. What informs? What informs? This is the the real notion. I think it's a um, one of the things we thought we might talk about. But it's that notion of formative assessment, mm. you know, it's that ongoing stuff. We go, oh, gee, I tell you what, there's three kids I need to follow up with for some support tomorrow. There's five kids I need to follow up with some extension. How can I modify the task that I've got for tomorrow mm. uh, to cater for these kids? It's the yeah. so uh, maybe the is- idea of yeah immediate assessment on the spot. And the richer the task, the richer the assessment information you get from it. Yes. Maybe this is the real power of on-the-spot teaching is that we are truly responding to the individual needs of the kids, mm. whereas yep. a blanket program where you all read the script and you yeah. all your children follow this, it's not even listening to what the kids need. It's, it, no, 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 and not, not even finding out what they know. It's, no. it's, uh, um, it, it's, it's been just... Over decades, it's been shown, and a lot of these people claim, "Well, oh, this is uh, this is evidence based." Oh, man, show me the evidence! Like, yeah. you know, really, um, I'd like to see the boredom and disengagement levels. This mm. is two thousand and twenty-three. Yes. You cannot be a teacher standing up in the front of the room like we all had in the in the sixties, seventies. It doesn't work. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and said, so, "Yeah, but this is research, and research is not showing you anything, dude. Get off the." the stage and get amongst your kids. The, the evidence base is actually uh, all the great teaching we've learned about over the last 30, 40 years and we've been getting better and better and, and learning about what works and what doesn't. So that's the evidence, not yeah. that I've invented this program that's suddenly <coughs> going to be a magic yeah. pill. 
pill that you can all swallow and, you know. No, it doesn't work that way. No. No. Now, Rob, you uh, mentioned the importance and the power of catching some of the children, you know, getting a little bit more information in the share. Mm. Um, I know you do this as well, but the power too of getting children to like almost we talk about on the spot teaching but on the spot reflecting reflecting on their own learning like what did i do today or what was i like the question i most ask you know young writers or you know writers in primary settings is so what were you trying to do as a writer today how did that mm. go notice for yourself <laughs> you know yeah. where where is it? Where do you want to show me that, you know, this is what you were doing or um, which sometimes I find really helps then too when I do collect there, you know, say for me if I'm collecting writing, that we can go, oh, my goodness, this child's jotted here what they were trying to achieve, what they were trying to do. Let's see how good they, you know, how did that work for them? And the fact that they can reflect on that themselves. But you do something very similar in maths. Yeah, the emphasis on um, in maths is that it's a, a true reflection. Maths, there's a, there's a lot of sharing happens in maths. And that's not too bad, but but some of the sharing is just inane yeah. dribble. It's just a kid sitting in a circle showing their work, and if they've all done the same task, I mean, you know, could you be any more bored? Yeah. Um, so it's a uh, so I do a lot of things that are reflection, and and the reflection piece, is, and I'm just. Every one of them, I, um, there's one I do called 20 words. And I just say, you've got 20 words to tell me what you found out doing maths today. Mm. Do not do a recount. I don't want to know what you did today because I was here and I know what you did, but I, I'm not sure yet what you found out. You need to tell me. And you've got 20 words to do it exactly. Mm-hmm. Not 19, mm-hmm. not 21. So the, the fun is that, okay, you, they go exactly 20. I said, yes, I don't call it approximately 20 words. I call it 20 <laughs> words. And full stop is 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 not a word unless you write 18 words and then finish with the two words, full stop. <laughs> and they go, oh, of course, are you allowed to do that? And I said, yeah, go for it. But, uh, <laughs> so, you know, so I go into that. I've had some crackers as they finish with thank you or um, a mm. bye, Phil, or uh, a <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, – you get some great feel. Like, so it's, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm strict on the 20 words, but I like them to be creative. But yeah. if I have a recount, I actually send it back. And the kid goes, oh, I have to do that all again. I said, yeah, you have to go and write all 20 words again again uh so it's you know it's not like it's a, a, a big thing because you're expecting them all to make discoveries aren't you, you yeah, yeah yeah and they're fascinating yeah. to read like sometimes yeah. it's oh it's 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 so good actually and there's nothing wrong with a teacher feeling good about themselves but when a kid writes a sentence that's about what they found out and you know that that was your intention of the lesson and they're giving mm. you an echo of that mm. through the key words that are up on the board because you need to support writing uh, kids you know sharon you run across it all the time Kids are reluctant writers, but if you have key words up on the board with a symbol so that they know what the word is, then the kids are uh, then the kids will write because they actually know that their writing is supported by language and terminology that's already up on the board. So, mm-hmm. from prep onwards, I'm getting the kids to reflect. What did you yes. find out? Yeah. Um, and yeah. so, uh, no, if people are interested, you just have to go to my uh, uh, website. It has a lot of the of those share reflection activities, and they're welcome to them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the emphasis, what did you find out? Yes. yes. And, yes. and how did you feel? And how did you feel? Ha- yes. Because you're right, Rob, if you have a kind of a boring, all the same maths activity, you can't really share a discovery because we're all doing the same. <laughs> the same thing. Yeah, thing. We, all did, we, we all did page 48 from targeting maths. What do you want us to talk about? Where is it? And uh, that goes back to that engaging task and that open task where we can all come in at our own entry level. And as you've said, I mean, that's going on to another thing where you – you're not planning. You're actually planning uh, what problem-solving strategies they can use in that yeah. lesson. But yeah. yeah, that's going on to another topic. But it yeah. is with a good one. But yes, um, yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's a um, yeah. Look, it's a, it's a great time. I, I like the reflection part of a lesson, and we should be doing it more. The, the, that expectation um, that that you you tell me what you found out today and how did you feel today. And there's there's ways I do that from prep. Um, it's not in words that they, they can draw uh, pictures and they, but I encourage them to label the picture, but what am I going to label it with? Label it with the key words. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so, Rob, uh, if, so if a teacher is um, 
teaching in a very traditional way in maths and they want to make this change, what's the first kind of things that they, what sort of steps could they take to change their teaching if they wanted to? Shut the duck up. Um, <laughs> so that was duck. Uh, it was uh, um, talk less. You want to change mm. your teaching, talk yep. less, listen yep. more. Yeah. And trust your kids. Well, a little saying in maths or in, in teaching, really, trust yourself to trust your kids. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Your knowledge should be one of the last things you actually want to part with because you might just find out that they know heaps and then you might find out they don't know much at all. Well, then they need your knowledge, but don't presume they need it. Find out. And so, don't just find out with essential assessment. Find out by giving them a really good task and, and let, them, let them get into it. Um, so uh, I, think, I think my first advice would be just try it. Talk yeah. less. And trust what, yourself to trust your kids. And yeah. what challenges have you noticed teachers having when they first try this? You know, what, where do they get stuck? Um, a lot of times if they've tried it, they, they don't. They go, oh, oh my God. They knew all this already. Um, mm. oh, I was going to tell them about this, but I've, I've got two thirds of my grade already know it. I could take right. a small group tomorrow. I've got them all, and it's it's, it's a, it can be just a wonderful feeling. It's it's just it's it's liberating as a teacher that you don't have to be the source of all the knowledge, but you are there for when the kids need. It's not like you're, you're shutting them off from your knowledge. It's it's a it's just no. Let's see what you know first. Uh, bring it on, and uh, if I need to, I'll, I'll fill in the gaps. Like that's regularly with. Uh, um, uh, it might be a topic like multiplication, like the kids don't know some good strategies, but I try to find out, do they know what strategy do you know first? Nobody knows the grid method. Nobody showed it the other day in a grade three, four grade. Mm-hmm. So from a task, from a task that they were interested in, I then just say, look, kids, maybe have a look at this when you want to work out this problem that we're doing in this activity. And then they, you've got them, they're all looking up saying, oh, yeah, that's not a bad way to do it. And they go back to the task that they were involved in. So, so if a te- um, teacher's got an engaging task going and they're not talking, they're, they're getting involved mm-hmm. with their kids, what, are there any pitfalls they come across when they're first trying this on-the-spot teaching where they are working with an individual or a group? Um, oh, the yeah, the pitfall would be that the the task is not going to carry the time. You know, oh, that, okay. that's your, yep. that's you've got a you've got a close problem and there were a worksheet. They're all finished in three in five minutes, and you've you've visited three kids. Um, so it's, then it's panic sets in. You've got kids mm-hmm. in a queue. Uh, so it it's things like you know regularly use engaging and or open task. I mean, you mm-hmm. you have an expectation up on the board. You know, you've got to put a circle around thirteen. You've got to get thirteen points, and just mm-hmm. little things like that. So you don't have a queue of eight kids who have done one equation or whatever it is or solve mm. or found mm. one answer and they all want to show you and just say, dudes, you know, what's, what's the 13 on the board for? And they go, oh, yeah, we've got to get 13 points, just little things like that. And just uh, so now you've got the time. It's all controlled now because the kids have all gone back because they know they've only got one point because they – they didn't hear or they didn't listen to you probably, but that's when I put it up on the board. Just say, dude, I told you this. And then the word gets around the room in no time. You know, you've got to have mm-hmm. 13. So just little things like it's the depth of the task uh, yeah. that enables yeah. you to get around to as many kids as you can on the spot. Yeah. And I think you'd be absolutely right in that, you know, once people start, you know, if they start trying it out and you're on the floor – you know, seeing where children are going, you know, how they're going with it. It wouldn't mm. take long, you know, if it was closed to go, oh, my goodness, we're going to be done here in a few minutes. Yeah, two minutes, yep. Now, yep. What, so what can I do to push children along? Because and is that, you know, bring them back together or is it, like you say, you know, set the expectation of, well, you've got this done, well, think further, you know, like set that um, – I don't know. It's got to be an open task for that to happen. Well, it really, it does. Or there's yeah. got to be some depth to a closed problem. Whenever you, yeah. it's, and that's a teaching skill is to know whether your task is open or closed. Like sometimes mm. a task just looks fantastic and you go, yeah, getting into this. And you're right, it may have been fantastic, but some kid's going to finish it in seven minutes. And what yeah. have you got for her or him? You know, and it's, uh, so that's the thing. Keep your closed task, but just build some depth into it and not just like do 20 more of the same problem, like depth, real depth. 
depth uh, in, into a closed problem, and um, th then you, you're fine. The more times a problem is open, well, you don't have that issue because it's so easy to, to challenge on the spot. I, uh, I, that's why I, a majority of my lessons are, are, are open or part open tasks, or, or if they're closed, uh, they're engaging. But I know, hold on, okay, this is closed. Somebody's going to finish this in less than 10 minutes. Yeah. What have I got for her or him? Yes. So when you're with um, a student, say, in your on-the-spot on teaching moment, um, what sort of questions you use with a student uh, are pretty important too, aren't they? Like to to take, yeah. the, to take them deeper in something or to uh, clarify something or, you know, the questioning. And there are, uh, there are resources on that too to help with the questioning, aren't there? Like, um, Look, it really is, and the, the, that's just why or how. But uh, the time you spend with the kids on on the spot teaching, I reckon it falls under one of the E's. And, and um, you know, just analysing what I do, it, it's just, it seems to be one of the E's. I, I'm either uh, a kid stuck, so I'm explaining. Now that explaining shouldn't be too wordy. I, I actually just need to draw a number line nine times out of ten, and a oh. number line is worth a thousand words. So I might explain something to a kid. Yeah. Um, I'll encourage. Like I said, love what you're doing. You're on yes, the right track. Yep. Just keep doing it. Yeah. Um, I'll extend. I just say, oh, okay, okay, now listen, the next one, I want you to use one of the hash numbers. Really push yourself. See if you can work mm -hmm. it out with this number. Um, I'll extrapolate. Yeah, what would happen if you tried that one? And so well, I'll extrapolate and just get the you, – you, I love what you're doing with the maths here, but where can this go? And mm. so uh, I'll enable a kid. I'll just say, hold on, there's just one little thing you need to do. And so it's more – it's not an explanation. It's just enabling. There could be a little misconception that's holding them back. And and uh, um, and sometimes I just have to exhume. I just have to get them out of the hole. They've just dug themselves. So it's <laughs> – <laughs> that's so, uh, so it's a total exhumation, that's right. if that's a word. <laughs> uh, so I'll, uh, that's I'll great. I love that. But uh, I'll exhume them. Yeah, so it's one of those E's, Phil. Yeah. I love the E's. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yes that's yeah. a good checklist for people to have in their yeah. minds. You know, It seems the... to be, it's, it's one of those, it's, it always seems to be, it comes back to one of those E's. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, explain, encourage, extend, extrapolate. Enable, and sometimes you just have to exhume. Yeah, 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 yeah. and that across any subject area. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. the same. Yeah, it could be in a science same. lesson, it could be in a music lesson, it could be in a lit lesson. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Like yeah. you know, this story is not a narrative. Well, let's let, you need to exhume there from yeah. there and uh, explain why. And yeah, exactly, Sharon. Yes, and so I think that's the that's a really good point of difference around. Yes, we're giving timely feedback. No, what were we – sorry, in the high-impact teaching strategies, what's the – Immediate feedback. Immediate feedback, yeah. thank you. Mm -hmm. um, immediate feedback, you know, this really extends feedback into not just receiving some feedback but to taking some more immediate action. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. That's, and that's the power of it, isn't it, that it's not – you know, it's not feedback after the event – it's, it's no, actually the, feedback yeah, exactly. that's taking us from this moment on and for the rest of this lesson, <laughs> you know, I am taking yeah. this with me. I'm using it. I'm yep. using this to be successful from this moment on. And I think that's the, you know, when we catch those moments through that on-the-spot teaching, when we move children on like that, then, I mean, it's just there is almost – a buzz in the room around that, you know, knowing yeah, that yeah, that yep. we're all moving on. It's not – no one is in static mode. <laughs> no, look, it's – it's a, and like I said, you may not – like there was a kid I got to for immediate feedback. Was it, it was, I took two grades because a lot of kids missing for both the, both these grade twos the other day. Mm -hmm. So it was about 28 kids, 29 kids. So it wasn't bad. There was quite a few missing from their normal classes. Yeah. So uh, – um, and there, there was uh, there was a kid I got to with about three minutes to go because I wanted to fit in my reflection activity because you know, I really rate them as important. Yeah. And um, I just got to him and I thought, oh, I wish I had got to him earlier because I, I gave the immediate feedback and, you know, it's because I was on the spot with uh, – I probably got around to 
18, 19 of the kids, uh, which is a pretty good effort. If you're getting around a half or more, you've done really well. And they were that was quality time with the kids. It was it was uh, just getting from kid to kid. Sometimes there was two kids doing uh, uh, working on a similar problem, so I was able to do a, a pair thing. Uh, I could nearly have pulled a group at one stage, but I mentioned that to the teachers observing, and just say, look, you'd want to get these three tomorrow because they're they're way past addition and repeated addition. They they should be doing some stuff for multiplicative thinking. And uh, but this kid I got to was just a. Uh, I didn't quite have to exhume, but I needed to enable this kid because he was just just a uh, just wasn't. It just wasn't it fully wasn't. getting the problem, yeah. uh, but there was something there. So it wasn't like an, an exhumation, but I had to, I had to sort of, uh, <laughs> I had to give some enabling. Some but I'd run out of time. Right, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, it was. Uh, um, so I needed to to uh, to have some time. But that that's the sort of thing I said. Look, this task tomorrow, uh, he's one of the ones that you you would have a look at, and um, um, because his work shows he's nearly got it, but not quite. So mm -hmm. yeah. So sometimes, but don't get down on yourself. I've done a good job to get around to. 18, 19 kids. So, you know, yes. so they had the benefit of my time. So yeah. Uh, yeah. No, nothing's – it's not a catastrophe no. when you don't get to every kid. They'll no. be there tomorrow. Exactly. And I think the reflection part – is the other window for yes, us. Yes, yes, so, and, and that's right. And the, the, and it was really interesting to read this one. Uh, for, I, I did a uh, two one one. What a two facts yes. you found out today. One feeling you felt, and one one thing with an F, because I lose my alliteration otherwise. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so it's uh, they had to do two facts you found out. One feeling you felt, and one thing uh, that was fun. <laughs> yeah. And uh, just to read their facts and and. Uh, uh, it was it was fascinating. The ten kids I didn't see, or the you know, ten or eleven kids I didn't get to, mm -hmm. uh, and we all the teachers and myself we read through their some of their um, reflections, and and with four of those I go well, but you know, and look back at their work because they were pretty happy with themselves, yes. and uh, and their work reflected it. And then once again, I don't have to follow those kids up um, mm -hmm. because not only is there evidence there in their work sample, but also from their reflection, they yes. feel they got the concept, they got yeah. the topic, they got the skill. Yeah. Yeah. Now, this is going right back to the beginning of the podcast when we were talking about, you know, not doing too much talking <coughs> and getting the yep. kids into – I was just thinking a little bit more about when you asked Phil about, you know, what might be some of the pitfalls that we find mm -hmm. and that notion of not doing too much talking and getting them into the task. And, mm -hmm. I, and I think sometimes, you know, that's where we find a bit of the – um, the pitfall is when we've either taken too long to get into the task or we've got too many children <laughs> who are still faffing around, <laughs> not getting yeah. started. But years ago, I came across an educator. They were actually in health education. But as she talked to me, she said, did I know about the MITS strategy? I said, no, tell me what MITS stands for. And it's the acronym for most important 20 seconds. Oh, yeah. And it was yeah. that idea of once you've had your short, here's what we're doing today, now it's yep. time to get on with it for the next 20 seconds. The most important 20 seconds is from here to getting set up and getting started. It mm. should just be 20 seconds. Yep. Get yep. straight yep. into it. Get don't, straight into it. Yep. 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 No, don't no, that's, uh, that's a nice little one. Most the mitts most important to I like it. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, don't just get them going. If you've got fifty one percent of your kids understanding your instructions, the, yeah. you now got them. And you'll go. You'll make a beeline for the kids, especially classroom. But like sometimes I, I've worked it out already from the warm up activity who to go to. But you, as a classroom teacher, you know who would struggle to understand for all sorts of reasons yeah. uh, the instructions, and go over to but start making the kids responsible for yes. looking after one another. Yeah. 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 And um, and actually. Using the time to, I really like this, you know, where she said, it's not about, all right, I don't know, so I'll go and I'll go over to mm. someone and I'll ask. Actually, honour yourself first and see what yes. can I work out here? Yeah, what do exactly. I think I have to do? Mm. Yes, don't be learning be... dependent on me. Yeah. Yes, don't be yeah, don't be instructionally dependent. Don't be learning yeah. dependent on me, the, your teacher. Yes. I'll help you fill some gaps out, and I'll extend yeah. you, and I'll you know, but but don't 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 rely on me, and don't uh, as a teacher, don't ask for questions when you've finished no, your instructions. Yeah. Don't ask for questions because no. you actually might get questions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Actually, I've got a funny little story. I, I set the class off on their um, activity, you know, in, during their most important 20 seconds. Uh, yeah, they all went, I like that bit. All went, all went back to their places to sell on their work. One did... One kid did a cartwheel, then got straight, <laughs> straight, straight to her desk and started her work. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. yeah. Love it. Well, I normally look at this is a, the people that would have to understand. Phil, you you can hear me saying this because it's always done with a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. But uh, when kids are uh, slowest, I just go over to the first kid and I just go, oh, "Let me count how many you've got. Let me let me count how many oh, answers yes. you've got." Uh, yes. yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's none. None. Mm. Uh, and next you know, let me see how many you've done. Let me count them all. Oh, you've done a Great none. And then there's, yeah. and there's, mm. But I do it with a smile. I'm, yeah. It's not mean. It's not no, I'm just no. pointing at you haven't started yet. You haven't yeah, started yeah. yet. Yeah. And next with the kids, whoa, whoa. And they just, they just they, <laughs> you know, all of a sudden they're finding the pencil that have gone missing in the book. And, you know, so, <laughs> yes, uh, yeah. So don't faff around. So don't write the date. I already know what date it is. I said, if, you know, if I was picking your work up individually, um, mm. you know, yeah, I'd know what, what the date is. Or sometimes, like, lucky I don't see it hard. Very rarely now, but like sometimes the, the kids are ruling up, and I said, well, "What are you ruling up for? The book's already got lines in it. What you're not happy with those lines?" Mm-hmm. Um, and then mm-hmm. uh, then they just throw a teacher makes us. I said, "Well, I'm your teacher today. Do not rule up a book because that's that's just bought you about ten minutes bloody lunch time. Yes. You know, it's just like I'll stall yeah. time here. Oh, I can't find my rule. I have to rule up my book. Mm-hmm. Can't find my red pen. Like, mm-hmm. oh, for heaven's sake! Once again, it's 2023. Look, the date can be handy because you can look back at." work over time mm. um, but uh, otherwise don't rule up your book and copy what I've got on the board just get into the task already get mm. a move on yeah mm. yeah yeah and that was that was that real power of this mitts bit was no, mm. no I like it no questions you weren't just get into it. you weren't checking in with anyone else at this point you had to you had to make a start in that 20 seconds which oh. I actually have to admit, I think I did push it out to like the most important two minutes, which isn't mitts anymore. But but, but do you know it just oh, it's, made... it's the philosophy of it. I, yeah. I, I think the, time, the timing yeah. I wouldn't be worried about so no. much. But no. the philosophy of talk, don't, instructions once, get on with the job now. Yes, you go. yes. Yeah. And no it, questions, it was... no questions. No. Uh, and, uh, or if I could see kids really like, you know, really got a, a frown on their face or something, I said, everybody else go off. and But don't answer that question from the kid mm. because it could be, a, look, it's likely there's a, a high chance it's not a great question. Yeah. And then the other yeah. kids go, oh, you already said that. And, yes. you know, then they give yeah. it to the kid and it's like, well, no, well, you sort of deserve that. But, it's you know, yeah. you shouldn't have – you could have avoided that as a teacher by just saying, come up and see me. Yes. And so yeah. when, when the kid asks, asks not a great question, you can say, look, I did already say that, but it's one-on-one now and, she's, and he or she's not embarrassed anymore. It's, yeah. it's, so yeah. don't take questions. Like, oh. don't ask questions because mm. you might get questions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I think, it, you know, it also – sends that clear message too that I'm going to give the instructions once. Yeah. So listen yeah. in first yeah, time. It does. You know, I did prep. I started in prep in reception, uh, you know, foundation kids are just, you know, I just say you get your instructions once and you what you should hear they go, Right oh and they, yeah. they listen in and I said, off you go and they go, I don't know what to do. And I said, we'll go and ask somebody. And um and and so uh, but if a kid I said, Well yeah, look, you know, this kid has some issues and then I'll just say, I'll come and I'll show oh, you. Yes. But yeah. uh, otherwise no no responsibility on you and on your friends to, to uh, your classmates to uh, to help you out. Yeah. All right, so just you know, a, a real life story from the classroom um, year five six teacher talking about how last year you know we moved we moved away from having children just after the instructions were given to be staying on the floor and doing you know working as the group you know to get into the task, yeah. and I asked her so this year tell me about those who were in year five who you've now got in year six, what are the changes that you're seeing there? And she said. Yeah, well, this is here's the change of one child. The other one who's now, you know, the recess bell rings. He doesn't want to go out to recess yet because he's so invested in his writing that he's been doing on his own for the whole lesson. <laughs> he doesn't want to go out to recess. And he also just mentions to the teachers in the room if they wouldn't mind just lowering their voices so it doesn't interrupt him as he's writing. So, you know, that shift from... And at that age, from a child who was totally dependent on I need support in the group to now absolutely understanding and recognising for himself what he can do independently. So, so that's that real shift from 
letting them go early and letting them try it and getting the on the spot as required. But I think it's an important point that you've made, Rob, too. We don't have to get to everybody every time. And there are some children that we intentionally kind of just need to, out of all of your ease, maybe a bit of encouragement is the thing, but not to interfere too much sometimes. Yeah. No, no, give them, give them a, a, a chance. Like it's, it's not yeah. like you're banned from being at the front of the room. If you need to uh, to stop the class because mm. it's inefficient to keep going to, oh. to uh, individuals, yeah. well, for heaven's sake, just use your common teaching sense yes. and just, just say, okay, I need to. I've, I've found a majority of kids in the in the first uh, six, seven, ten kids that I've been to have the same error, have the same misconception, are making the same mistake. Stop the kids and just say, sorry for interrupting, guys, but we've got a, it. Looks like we've got a bit of an issue here. And do a mini clinic. It might go for two minutes, might go for less, might go for five, but then let them go back to the task again, get amongst them again. So, yeah. uh, you know, this, this, we need to have a flexible, not a loose, but a no. flexible definition of, of explicit teaching yes. or stroke uh, yeah. directional instruction because and the, the, uh, that just allows you to feel okay about being one-on-one -on -one with your kids. And when you are, you you are having the most impact you'll ever have as a teacher, whether I'm working mm. with preps, whether I'm working with year 10s. I get down to their uh, to their level physically, like I'm, I'm on an eye level with your kids, and um, it's just important. It's 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 part of the the relationships you build with kids that they yes. trust you, that they know you're interested. It's it's uh, mm. it's it's powerful. It's the most yeah. powerful way to teach. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So the big message is trust yourself, trust your kids, trust your kids. Yep, yep, yep. And get get them engaged. The 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 more engaged the kids are. Uh, the more that you could you, that you are in a position uh, to have effective on the spot teaching. Yep. Well, thanks very much, Rob, for a great session today. Um, as always, we really enjoy it, especially the humour. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I, I've yet to see a school that has as their school motto, motto uh, at our school, we shut the duck up. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, you know. yeah. Yep. Kudos to the school, whoever's brave enough to do it. I'll, 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 yeah, I'll yep. put, them, put my kids in there. So thank you, Rob. It'd have thank to you. be a poultry farm, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank you, Rob. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you to everyone for joining us today. We've loved to see that so many of you have subscribed to our episodes from all corners of the world. The Teacher's Toolkit podcast is all about giving you an insider's guide to top teaching ideas, tools, techniques in literacy, teaching and learning, and also numeracy. Of course. You bet. you bet. Please subscribe to our weekly newsletter via the website. You will receive advance notice on blogs, podcasts, events and ways to contact us. Thank you and all the best to you, our listeners. Bye. Yes. Oh, all and right. bye to Rob. Thanks so much, Thank Rob. You. No worries, yeah. Bronshaw. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thanks for listening to the podcast. To make sure you don't miss any literacy learning tips and insights, please subscribe to our show on your favourite podcast player. At Q Learning, our literacy specialists draw on over 30 years of teaching and international consulting experience to deliver world-class learning solutions. We equip, empower and support teachers to become their authentic selves. To find out about upcoming webinars and about how Q can help you and your school, visit qlearning.com.au. And you can get even more amazing teaching resources right now at teachific.com.au. Stay tuned.